In the seven books following Harry's journey, we saw what the modern day Wizarding World looked like, and it often makes me wonder what the Wizarding World was like way back when. And then, I stumbled upon some information that tells us exactly what the 14th century or the 1300s were like for wizards. In this video, I'm going to break all of this down and explain some fascinating Wizarding World history that Rowling expanded on. This is the first video of a few, and I guess you could say it's a little series on Movie Flame where I break down what the Wizarding World was like in different points of time and history. I'm excited to do this, and I really hope you guys enjoy these videos. Before we start, I'm trying to grow my footprint on other social medias besides just YouTube, so it would be awesome if you guys could follow me on Twitter and Instagram. I tweet about your favorite fandoms like Harry Potter, Avatar, Star Wars, Marvel, Hunger Games, and so much more. And you can see behind the scenes movie flame stuff on Instagram, and just some of my personal life like my dog Loki, who is the cutest dog in the world, and just some fun posts on both platforms. All of my social media platforms as well as my Patreon are linked below for easy access. If you want, give me a follow. If not, that's totally fine. So now, let's get the video started. Rowling very interestingly intertwined real history with the Wizarding World history, and she explained that though European explorers called it the New World when they first reached what we now call America, though Muggles didn't know about this land and the Native Americans there, wizards did long before them. They had visions and premonitions about this land, and later on, because they had such easy ways to travel compared to muggles using brooms and of course apparition, it was much easier to get across the giant oceans. This meant that wizarding civilizations even across the world were in contact with each other from the Middle Ages onward. The Native American magical community and those of Europe and Africa had known about each other long before the immigration of the European muggles in the 17th century. They quickly saw the similarities between their communities, as some families were clearly magical, some were half-blood mixed with muggles, and some also appeared unexpectedly in families where they had no magical ability in their past, meaning their children would be known as muggle-borns. Also, the overall ratio of wizards to non-wizards seemed consistent across both populations, and as did the attitudes of muggles wherever the witches and wizards cropped up. In the Native American community, some witches and wizards were accepted and were even highly praised and admired within their tribes. This meant that they gained reputations of being doctors who could heal anything or were the most outstanding hunters in the world. However, other witches and wizards in the Native American communities were disgraced for their beliefs, often because the muggles thought they were possessed by malevolent spirits. J.K. Rowling went on to intertwine old myths and legends in our real history and make them translate into Wizarding World history. In our history, there was a myth that Native Americans came up with called skinwalkers, something that they called those that could transform into an animal at will. Rowling went on to say that the Native American legend has its basis in fact when looking at Wizarding World history. This is of course with witches and wizards who became animagi, and yes, that's how you say it. The G is pronounced like a J. According to Rowling, the films got the pronunciation wrong. But anyway, a legend grew up around the Native American Animagi, the Native Americans thinking that these Animagi had sacrificed close family members to gain their powers and their transformation. This is of course not how an Animagi gets their ability. In reality, it's a very difficult 8-step process that few are able to do or cope with, but there's nothing that has to do with sacrificing family members. It's actually a pretty innocent process, though it's very hard. But because these Animagi and Native American tribes were so tormented, a large number of them assumed their animal forms to escape persecution, and also to avoid being hunted for killing their families. These rumors of the Animagi sacrificing family members is a terrible rumor that originated from muggle doctors who were faking magical powers themselves, and they feared exposure, so they killed two birds with one stone. They got the trust of those tribes that thought they were magical, and they drove away the real witches and wizards, who were the only people that could expose them to the fact that they were in no way magical. You're a fraud. The Native American community in the 1300s were very gifted in animal and plant magic, not to mention their incredible potions knowledge that was very advanced. They were very far ahead of European witches and wizards when it came to this branch of magic, and even with other forms of magic as well. The most glaring difference between magic practiced by Native Americans and the magic practiced by those on the other side of the world was the absence of a wand. The magic wand originated in Europe. Wands channel magic to make its effects more precise and more powerful. And in history, those trying to prove themselves as the very best among witches and wizards would master wandless magic and show it off to everybody else, as wandless magic is a great deal harder than magic with a wand. Another clear example of why Native American magic was so much better than European magic, because they excelled past European witches and wizards without even having wands. 
Rowling's expansion of the 1300s, and specifically the Native American history, is so interesting. And though this is all I have for you guys this week, next week I'm going to explain what the Wizarding World was like in the 1600s, so look out for that. And coming after that, I'll continue this history series and explain even more about the Wizarding World back in the day before Harry's time. Thank you so much for watching, guys. You can follow me on social media to see more of my personal life and see more of this little dude. You can follow me on Twitter and Facebook for Movie Flame updates. And I want to give a huge shout out to all my patrons listed below. If you want to be featured in the next video, plus get a bunch of other rewards, become a patron today. Again, thank you so much for watching. Make sure you press that like button and subscribe. And look out for more great videos on the way.